Hey guys, it's Dash. We're here at Cedar Creek Ridge. We're going for another practice hike. It's supposed to be eight miles. But um, I forgot something pretty important. <laughs> My shoes. <laughs> I have Crocs on. We usually just come in our Crocs or flip-flops and then we change into our shoes when we get here. So, um, so yeah, that's gonna make it a little bit more difficult. But we're gonna go as far as we can and see, see how it goes, so. But at least, hey, I've got my pack on today. Beautiful view. We're about halfway through, having fun. Show your feet. Doing pretty good. Her head is harder than this. <laughs> yeah, I'm and a little. And her feet are harder than this. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little bit of a hard head. And no. <laughs> but he's just worried about me. That's why, my night in baseball cap and jeans. Okay, so we're getting head going again. Oh yeah, head buff and hiking boots. <laughs> Baseball cap jeans sounds so much better, doesn't it? True. Okay. We made it! Woo! We cut it a little bit short because of the hiking boot dilemma, but five miles, so that's a good training. Five miles, not too bad. In yeah. Crocs. Yeah. And a backpack. Absolutely. Had my backpack on. The truthfully, this is the first time I put it on. I was supposed to put it on August 1st, but I knew one of you guys would see that I didn't have it on because I told you last time to ask me about it if you don't see it. So I put it on today and I'm keep it on the rest of the training. So I'm glad I got it on today. Thank you. You were my motivation. <laughs> you play with me here. No. <laughs> Bye. Bye. One of my favorite parts about training is our hiking lunch date afterwards because with five kids there's not a lot of alone time like ever <laughs> yum and the dog gets the bread oh yeah <laughs> that's our fun hiking training date <laughs> bye guys Hey you guys, this is Dash from Bloom Where You're Planted and we're here today um, at Henry's and we're visiting and adding a box to the little swarm that I got from my friend. Um, so, say hi Henry. Hi there. We're ready to do this big adventure. And my night in baseball cap and jeans is here to film. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. So, isn't that wonderful? I'm going to pass the camera to him. He's going to take over that part of this. All right. <laughs> I would normally bring my smoker and smoke first and smoke them to get them back inside, but I forgot it. I couldn't find it, actually. So, <laughs> so yep. we're going to go without smoke today. Wish us luck. All right. Okay. You ready? I think it'll come right off when we try it. Oh. Nice. Feels like they uh, built some up against this lid. Does it? Okay. But we'll, we got it. Oh no, yeah, it's oh, good. Oh, look at those. They're looking great. Beautiful. Oh, it looks like there's still an empty frame on the end. Mm -hmm. It looks like this isn't filled totally either. Oh, there they go. Yeah, they're getting pretty. It's that time of year, they're cranky. Back off if you need to, honey. Thank you. 
They're just cranky because there's a dearth. It's just a hard time for bees. What's there's, a dearth? A dearth is in the absence of blooming plants. There's not much honey in it, so we're just no, going to drop it. No, it's mostly just honey. Yeah, we're just going to drop it in front of the hive. There we go. They're doing great. They've almost got that box filled. So that's good. We got it. Yay. Perfect. Yeah. So a lot of people helped us art up the hive. Thank you guys for arting up the hive with me. We made it look really beautiful. It's definitely a work of art. <laughs> what I thought I would do is uh, put some more sugar water in the feeder for them. And that'll help them get started on these new yes. on these new uh, cranes. Yes, it'll make them less cranky. Yeah. That's always good. Okay. We got it. That was easy breezy. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> that is. Perfect. Okay. That went without a hit. These bees are normally very gentle bees, so they're just a little bit cranky because it's a dearth. It's a lack of blooming things right now. So it's just a struggling time for bees. They're more defensive because they have to defend against robbers that are taking their last stores of honey that they have to make it through this dearth. So as you can see, they're still buzzing around me. I've walked quite a ways from the hive. They seem to be super um, attracted to the camera and I guess because it's black and you wear white things because um, a bear is black or brown and so um, they're always more defensive of black things so that's why a beekeeper's uniform is white if you didn't know that <laughs> so yeah they're still buzzing around me but I'm gonna walk out here and, and like I said normally they're super gentle so that doesn't it just means they're cranky right now <laughs> Their stores are low. Henry has an amazing garden. This is his okra. And that's what we're gonna eat this afternoon. They've invited us in uh, for fried okra. Now, Iris, I think the bees are gone. Let me take down my hood. Now, Iris happens to be the best cook in the South. I just, I'm saying, I know you might think you're better or you might know someone thinks you're better but trust me it's not true iris is the best so we're gonna go enjoy some of her fried okra today and look how it is grown oh so you fill water into the bucket yeah yeah and you put a little hole in the bucket yeah oh show you. see there's just a little hole where it trickles out oh a tiny hole okay yeah oh uh, i see i put this over by it Fill that up and just let it trickle in. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Or, so it just trickles in slowly. Yeah, and that way it noise. all soaks in right around the root ball. Okay, and how often do you think you fill that bucket? Uh, when it's raining, you don't have to, but right. like this hot, dry weather, I do it every two or three days. Okay. Uh, you all can right. tell if the, if the leaves start drooping a little, uh -huh. you know it's dry. Right, okay, and this is a loquat tree. I didn't yeah, know, yeah. I'd have to look up loquats. Uh, some people call it a Japanese plum because it came okay. from Japan. Makes a little fruit about that big and it's real, real tasty. Ooh, okay. Real uh, Henry's got a plum started. He's gonna give me, tell us about your plum tree. It has a neat history. Okay. This little tr uh, plum tree uh, is unusual. I have the, uh, that one right there is is where I got this little start from. They come up from the roots, and so that means they have the exact uh, genetics, genetics that goes on back forever. Uh, there's no pollination with other plums, and uh, uh, I got my start about uh, 35 years ago from an old gentleman up in Oklahoma uh, who brought them up to. Uh, where he lived uh, at uh, uh, close to Medill, when the, the Corps of Engineers took their farm the, to build Lake Texoma. Oh, yeah. So he brought a start from there, and his parents 
had got brought theirs from back east, Kentucky or Tennessee, when they moved in a covered wagon My through goodness. Indian Territory and started. So this wow. is the exact uh, genetics as the one that goes back 140, 50 years. So that's right. so exciting. But they make beautiful so here it is. Uh, plums, nice sized plums. Yeah. And uh, uh, when they're ripe, you can just eat them off the tree and they're just sweet and just mm. tasty. You just mm. eat all you want. Or they make the best jelly. Oh uh, my goodness. You take that juice yeah. and it makes a, a, a nice red, Oh, kind of clear but nice red color and oh they're so good um, oh I can't wait so this is one yeah. of these is in my little tree um, Henry's gonna keep it for me until it gets cool in the fall so I can plant it on my property yeah. so he'll keep it nice and alive <laughs> for me <laughs> and this is the tree this yeah, is the tree all the, grown that's up one of the it'll get bigger I just set this out I, I'm, I moved it from Oklahoma just dug it up See, here's a little one coming up from the road. Oh yeah, it has a little sprout. Yeah, I can just take a, a sharpshooter shovel and dig down and dig that up and transplant it and they always just grow great. How cool. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait for plums. Yay. And has this bush produced any fruit yet? Oh yeah, this one, oh, this is the first year it started producing. It didn't have maybe two dozen. Okay. But, uh, uh in another year, it should have <laughs> half bushel or more. Woohoo! And they just make like crazy. Okay. As they get older. Sounds good. You give them three or four years and they just uh, produce abundantly. Yay. And Yum. Uh, apparently, they're self pollinating because I just got started with one. Okay, good. That's good. Hey, guys. I was just out this evening feeding my bees, making sure they had some sugar syrup in this time of dearth. And I wanted to update you a little bit on the hive at Henry's. Um, after I left that evening, I really was feeling like um, there was something I was missing. And so I thought about it and you know, we didn't have smoke and the bees came out, you know, they were pretty defensive. And so um, we just put the other box on and we left, but we did notice that there were like three frames left to build out. And so I called Henry and asked him, could you go in with smoke and take another look at that? Um, and the reason I did that is because another box at this time could be too much area for the bees to defend meaning the small hive beetle could attack them and this that's just too much area to chase around that pest so um and then also going into winter is kind of a time of decreasing and we do have a fall bloom so depending on what the weather does it could be amazing and they could there could be another fall bloom for us we have kind of a spring bloom here in dallas texas and then a dearth and then another fall bloom and then winter so it could be you know better than i think if the weather you know cooperates we could have a great fall bloom and they might burst with with a lot of growth but normally fall is kind of a building down time and so the chances of them filling out that hive box that one box i don't it's pretty slim and then and then mostly filling out the next box so I just wanted to update you guys that after I spoke with my friend Henry and he took a little closer look at it, he said, yeah, there, there were like four frames almost in that box that were not even touched. And then some of them just a small bit on, on each one. So he went ahead and took the box off of the beehive. So just left it with that one deep box and it will probably stay that way through winter. And the other thing they notice, when your bees are agitated like that, yes, it's a dearth, but there can also be other things going wrong. Something might be attacking them. Like uh, my bees were very agitated once and I found a paw print, like a possum paw print or something on the hive. And so something might be bothering them. And so I told him, look, you know, check for small hive beetles. Just look around, you know, and, and see, see if you see any. And sure enough, he did. And so a lot of the times when a hive is being attacked by a pest like that, then they can be, you know, hyper defensive. So it's something to, to notice your bees and then look out for. So we're gonna put a small hive beetle trap 
in there. I would show I would show it to you, but I do not have any, so I need to order some. So I'm gonna do that online tonight and get that here quickly and get that set up so that they can uh, herd the small hive beetles into the trap. And the trap just has lime in it and it just dries them out, the small hive beetles, and they die. So it's kind of amazing miracle to see that, that the beekeeper can work with the bees in that way and come up with solution to help with that pest. But anyway, I just wanted to update you guys. I don't want to mislead anyone um, who's getting started with beekeeping. Um, and so anyway, sometimes you're checking out a hive, like I said, and seems, you know, the heat of the moment, you do what you do, and then you go, you think later, or I even can watch the videotape and think, oh, you know what, that's too much room. So just want to update you guys. Bye. See you later. If you guys love seeing my beekeeping adventures and all the other adventures that we have on our homestead, then if you would subscribe, then you'll get a notification of my videos when they come up. And if you could give me a thumbs up, that also helps encourage me to keep doing the videos. I don't get paid for this at all. So I just love to inspire others to grow their own food and to keep backyard bees, since bees are having such a hard time right now. Um, so, if you could give me a thumbs up, that is a big encouragement to me. Thanks you guys for watching. Bye from Bloom Where You Planted. Just finished. Eight miles in three minutes. Incredible. Oh, is this thing on? <laughs>